Is the Logitech G502 a good mouse to be buying right now? This thing has almost 16,000 reviews on Amazon. So I decided to pick myself one up. So let's take a look at it. We're going to go over the positives and the negatives. Let's go. Hey guys, welcome to Finesse Gaming. Thank you for tuning in. Hope you're all having a fantastic day. So today's video, like I said, is going to be a review of the Logitech G502 mouse with a hero sensor. I got a special edition one that I picked up a couple of weeks ago from Amazon. And like I said, 16,000 reviews on this thing. So loads of people are using it. Let's take a look at some of the positives, negatives, what kind of games it's good for and what it's good for on the PC. And yeah, I hope you enjoy the video. Let's jump straight into it, guys. Roll the intro. Let's go. Okay, let's go over the positives first then and then we'll go over some of the negatives. So there's quite a few positives, which is great. And as you expect from a Logitech mouse, the first thing we should really notice is the build quality and the materials they use are fantastic. It's second to none. So the build quality of these things is incredible. So we've got some really good plastics being used. You can see the little details there they've got on the uh, thumb, where the thumb goes, and you've got very, very good plastic being used all around the whole mouse. You've got the little RGB light as well, which uh, looks okay. And yeah, the build quality is great. The feel of it is good, and the size of it is very good as well. It sits right into the palm of your hand. Really a very comfortable mouse to be uh, using if you're using it for long periods of time. So we can't really fault the build quality and the feel. They are both fantastic. And added to that, most Logitech mice actually have this, but if you want to use this thing for non-gaming, if you want to use it for scrolling through uh, data, spreadsheets, worksheets, or whatever it may be, or websites, you've got this scroll wheel right here that just spins and spins and spins if you want to switch it off. And if you press the little button below it, it stops it and it moves it back to a gaming mouse. So it's fantastic for that. If you're gonna scroll through loads of pages of data, it does it unbelievably quickly. So that's a really, really good thing. You can switch it on and off, but uh, it's a nice thing if you just wanna scroll through social media, worksheets, spreadsheets, uh, anything that you're gonna do outside of gaming, it's a great little addition to have on the mouse. And uh, yeah, so that's gonna be a positive thing. And that scroll wheel can also go from side to side as well, which we'll go over in a second in some of the button options. So very, very good. Scroll wheel's good. Build quality is good and the feel of the mouse is fantastic. Okay, let's go through the software really quickly. It's a good positive that comes with this mouse. It's really easy to use. So let's go ahead and have a look at it now. So this thing comes with 11 um, buttons that can be mappable. The only one that isn't is this one here, which is the one to change the scroll reel uh, lock on or off. But all of the other buttons on the side and on the top are mappable to different things. And as you can see, we've got a little bit of RGB on it. We'll go over the RGB in a second. Um, but yeah, you've got the uh, the light sync and the um, different effects that you can have with the RGB to start with on the software and assignments. So this is where it's nice and easy to use. You've got all of these kind of already set up that you can just assign to any of the buttons. So you've got all the ones at the front here and you've got three of them on the side as well. So you've got plenty of different options, plenty of buttons that you can map to all sorts of different things. You've got the commands you can add to them. You've got different key actions, uh, different actions that you can use to open up things, the macros you can set up and different things for settings. So you've got plenty of different options with all the settings. So it's really, really easy to use. It's just uh, picking a command, picking a button you want to do, and then changing it to whatever command you want. So as you can see, I've got my uh, G7 and G8 down here. So these two scrolled to uh, something else. And then on a game, I can map my eight and nine keys to whatever I want to use. So it's the easiest way of doing it. And yeah, very, very straightforward, simple software to use, which is great, no uh, stressful time working everything out. And the last thing on here is the DPI. So this is, um, again, very, very simple. You can change DPI, you can move it up and down if you wanted to. And uh, I generally keep it at 800, but you've also got this uh, one that's highlighted and that is the button, if I go back here, it's this DPI shift button there. So if you hold that down, it will shift the DPI from whatever you use at standard to whatever you set this at. So you can slow down the movement of the camera if you're playing FPS games or speed it up if you wanted to. And uh, it gives you just another option. It's good for things like uh, using uh, sniper rifles in FPS games and a few different uses as well. So that's a good little um, addition. Again, very, very simple to use. You can change the polling rate and the DPI speeds are here set. So uh, yeah, very, very easy to set up. And as standard, these two top buttons are the two buttons that come with a uh, DPI setting. So I changed them in my game because I only use one DPI for gaming. But again, you can keep these mapped to DPI if you want to and change it up or down. I found accidentally pressing these with a DPI set there on game was a bit annoying because all of a sudden the screen goes uh, out of sync and it's sometimes a bit hard to just get it straight back. And the last thing then as a positive is the cable that it actually comes with. It's very, very lightweight, very agile. It's easy to move. It doesn't really get caught and it's really, really easy to move around the desk. Also, I will say when you get this uh, thing, you comes with this little pack of weights. 
So to change the weights, if you just pull down this little bit of, um, on the special edition one, just on the little bit of white on the thumb, underneath the thumb placement, pull down that on the bottom of the mouse, comes out and that's where the weights will go into the back of the mouse so if you did want to add weight to it it's a good little addition to have very simple to do again is just clip in there the magnetic just drop in and that thing just drops back into place so again magnetic really, really easy to use if this thing at the box weighs 121 grams for the mouse only and you can add in with the weights here another 18 grams so it's giving you good adjustability but i will go over one of the negatives in a second which is actually the weight of it depending upon what game you play so uh yeah, but the last positive, it does have that adjustability. If you do want to add weight to the mouse, it's giving you that option to do it, which is a good little thing. Okay, first negative then. There's only a few negatives, but the first one I just mentioned then a second ago, is basically the weight of the mouse. As I said, this thing's 121 grams. It depends what mouse you are using and what you're used to and what game you play. But if you play an FPS game, a first person shooter online, specifically if you're playing an online multiplayer, basically a lighter mouse is generally better because it's easier to move. You're going to have faster movement speeds you'd be more accurate, you just generally get better at the game. This thing is almost double the weight of my old Razer mouse or my other Razer mouse that uh, I'll probably go back to using, to be honest, once I'm finished with the review of this one. But it's like double the weight of it. The other one is 61 grams, I think it is, and this is 121. So not far off double the weight of it. It's just a little bit too heavy. It's double the weight because it's got more buttons and it's got a few more features on it. But those features and buttons aren't really useful in FPS games. Again, this does depend on what type of game you play. Um, but yeah, for FPS games, it's just a little bit too heavy for me. It's going to be a little bit too difficult to move around the mouse pad. I have noticed from playing with it, you do get a bit more wrist um, fatigue playing with it for a long period of time. Um, so there's a few little problems with it if you're going to play with it anyway for a long period of time with different games. But this thing is more suited for the World of Warcraft types of games, the MMO games because it's got more buttons, okay? You've got 11 buttons on there that you can use. But again, if you play one of those games, you might be looking at more of the Razer Naga or the Corsair Scimitar Pro, which have got even more buttons down the side, which again, I have got one of them, which I will do a review on at some point in the future. But yeah, this thing is gonna be a good mouse for certain things, but not for FPS games. It's a little bit too heavy. Okay, on top of that, although it's got 11 buttons that you can map, a couple of them are quite hard to use. So I'll see if I can get this in front of the camera. Okay, so the two side buttons here are very, very easy to access. So is the one down the very front here. So that's the one for the DPI. But you've got these two up on the front here. So this one at the very front is nice and easy to use. But this back one is a little bit harder to press. This one here is quite a difficult one to get to if you're in the middle of a game. And so is the scroll wheel. If you want to move this thing from the side to side, because it does go left to right, it does click to the side a little bit. It's quite hard to do. So when your hand is sitting on the mouse, it is actually quite difficult to draw your finger all the way back to use this secondary button back here. Most of the time, it's going to be uh, miss hit or it's going to be pressing that front button. The front one is easy to do because you can just move from side to side and you can click it, very simple. But the back one is much harder to get to. And so is this scroll wheel to push it from left to right. It's a little bit more difficult. In the middle of a game, if you're used to doing it, it's fine. But if you're not used to doing it and you haven't trained a lot to do it, it's going to be a difficult one to press without thinking about it. And sometimes I press them by accident, which is a little bit annoying. So not the best mouse um, button placements for those couple of buttons, but the rest of them are pretty good. So it's going to give you maybe seven or eight buttons that are pretty good. Um, but again, most mice, you get six buttons on the standard ones and they're very, very good. You don't need really any more buttons than that if you're playing FPS games. If you want a couple of more, okay, maybe think about it, but you are giving up the weight of the mouse for that. And again, if you play in the other games like the World of Warcrafts, then you've got, you want a lot of buttons really to be pressing so you don't have to have everything mapped to the keyboard. But some of the other mice like the Razer Naga, you've got, uh, I think, 12 buttons down the side of the mouse that you can press. They're easily accessible with your thumb. Uh, so they're a little bit easier to use. If you do want to use one of those mics as well in an FPS game, it's the same weight as this. Okay, it's around 120 something grams. So they might be a better option than this for that type of game. And the last thing, although it's a bit of a negative, it doesn't really bother most people, but the RGB on this thing is, it's okay, it's not great. So you've got the RGB logo down there and you can see the lights come on when you click something, the little lights down the side, the three of them. So they're okay, um, but yeah, there's no like underglow, there's no great RGB. I mean, it's fine. I mean, it doesn't really make any difference because your hands cover it anyway, but it would be nice for this kind of mouse to have a good RGB. So if it's something that you want, it's not the best RGB, but again, it doesn't bother most people. Also, I will say the standard price of this mouse is about 80 pounds. I managed to pick it up on sale for 37. Um, so that's a fantastic price. That price for this mouse is a very, very good price. For £80, maybe not so good, okay? There's other mice that are far better, in my opinion, at that price point than this one is. If you're going to buy it specifically for a certain game, there are other mice that are specifically kind of targeted for certain games, so it's worth looking at them first. 
But yeah, this one for 35 or 37 pounds is going to be a good buy. But again, make sure you don't buy it at that full price because 80 pounds is just a little bit too high for this particular one. Okay, overall, what's this mouse good for? What's it not good for? And is it worth buying? So the mouse, if you're using this mouse for just general computer things where you're scrolling around different worksheets, different spreadsheets, if you're using it for work, it's a fantastic mouse. I, I doubt that you would get one that's a better mouse than this one. The software is easy to use. The scroll wheel is fantastic. The feel is great. It is nice and comfortable to use. Like I said, it's, it's a little bit heavy. So if you're going to be moving it around a lot in FPS games, that does get a bit tiring. If you're just using it for general computer stuff, then it's fantastic. So if you're going to use it for anything like that, really, really good mouse, highly recommend it. If you're going to use it for MMO games like World of Warcraft and like some of those other games where you need a lot of buttons down the side, again, this one is a very good option. There are others which could possibly be a little bit better, like the Simintar Pro and the Razer Naga. But again, this is a good mouse. It's got 11 buttons, they're easy mappable. They are simple-ish to reach, but you will struggle on a couple of the buttons to get to. So uh, that's why it's probably not quite as good as some of those others. But again, it is going to be one of the better mice on the market. There's only those two really that could possibly beat it for those games. As for FPS games, or should we say fast-paced online multiplayer games, whatever they may be, this thing, the problem with it is just the weight of the mouse. If this thing was a bit lighter, it would be a very, very highly rated mouse, but it's just a little bit too heavy. It's literally double the weight of some of the newer mice coming out now. Some of them are less than 60 grams. Some of them are just around that 60 to 70 gram mark. This thing being 121 or even more if you add the weights to it, it's just a little bit too heavy, okay? You do get fatigued when you're moving your mouse around a lot on the mouse pad, which most people generally do now because they have lower DPIs for those games, so you do need to move it around a bit quicker can get a bit more fatiguing, it is a little bit harder, and uh, yeah, not quite as comfortable to use. So it's not gonna be the best mouse for those particular games. You're not gonna be a bad player using it or anything, but you will get more benefit from some of those lighter mice that you'll be able to move around a little bit easier. And again, like I said earlier, the buttons on the standard mice, you've got two side buttons and then that's about it, you've got the two on the top. This thing has got more, but again, do you really need them for those types of games? Most of the time you don't. If you do really want a mouse that's got more than just those two side buttons, this thing is probably gonna be the next best thing to that, so it would be your best option then. But again, what you'll be sacrificing is the weight of the mouse for the extra button. So that's something you've got to consider. In my opinion though, go for one of those lighter weight mouse for FPS games. Buy this one if you want to be using a computer just for general use, and buy this one maybe for MMO games if you don't want to go and buy one of those other ones with the 12 buttons down the side. All right, guys, that's the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did like it, please consider dropping a like, hit the subscribe button and turn notifications on. Your support will be hugely appreciated. And you can also find me streaming on Twitch and Facebook. Links will be in the description below if you want to come and check them out. It'd be great to see you there. Also, guys, I'll leave a link in the description for this mouse. If you want to go and check one out, just click on the link and it'll take you through to Amazon to have a little look at it. But until next time, guys, keep gaming, keep safe. Good night. GG.